Okay, so in this video, we will prove part C of the root test. If you recall, the statement is the following. If the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n in absolute value is equal to 1, then the implication is the test simply fails. So we cannot conclude convergence or divergence. <coughs> Sorry. So to prove this, we'll simply show two examples where one series converges, one series diverges, and yet in both cases, the limit is equal to 1. Hence proving that we cannot reach any conclusion when the limit is 1. Before we do so, we have to recall a key limit, and that is that as we let n tend to infinity, the nth root of n converges to 1. So let's look at two very familiar series, the harmonic series. So summing from 1 to infinity, 1 over n. So this is nothing but, if we write out the first few terms, 1 plus a half, plus a third, plus a quarter, and so forth. This is a p-series where p equals 1. If p is less than or equal to 1, the p-series diverges. So this series diverges, and we can be more specific. As we are summing positive terms, as we add more and more terms, the sum gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and because it diverges, the only way it can do so is by blowing up to infinity. Hence, diverges. So here's the first series. Let's now look at a p-series where p is not 1, but where p is equal to 2. So summing from 1 to infinity, now 1 over n squared. We can write the first few terms of the series. So we get 1 plus quarter plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16 and so forth. So this is a p-series where p equals 2. As 2 is bigger than 1, this is a convergent p-series, so the result will give us a real number. We can be very specific here, although the result is far less trivial, but this actually sums up to pi squared over 6. So this series converges. But we could have omitted these two facts, simply saying here's a p-series where p is 1, so this series diverges. Here's a p-series where p is 2, therefore converges. And let's show that in both cases, the limit of the root test is equal to 1. So, in the first case, a n is 1 over n. In the second case, a n is 1 over n squared. So we'll evaluate both limits separately and arrive at an answer of 1. One thing that is uh, clear is we can omit the absolute value as the terms are already positive. So all we'll take here is the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n. Let's look at our first case. Case 2. So in case 1, the limit as n tends to infinity of a n in absolute value to the nth root, we can now replace. So a n is 1 over n. Again, as 1 over n is positive, we drop the absolute value to the 1 over nth power. Well, 1 to n power is 1, and on the bottom we'll have the nth root of n. But this is our familiar limit, the one we recalled in the beginning. As n tends to infinity, the nth root of n tends to 1. So this term is approaching 1. So the result will be simply 1 over 1, which is of course 1. 
Let's consider now our second case. Once again, because a n here is positive, we can drop the absolute value. a n is 1 over n squared, and we take the nth root of that. Once again, 1 to n a power is 1. And here this is n squared to the 1 over n. Well, I can simply interchange the exponents. I can first look at the nth root of n, all squared. Right? If you think about this, when you double exponentiate, you simply multiply the exponents. This is therefore n to the power 2 on n. This is n to the power 2 on n. So it's the same expression. And once again, we have here our familiar, li familiar limit. We know that as n tends to infinity, the nth root of n tends to 1. So the inside of our square here is approaching 1. But 1 squared is 1, so once again, we have 1 over 1, which is 1. And this completes our proof. So we have two series, the series of 1 over n and of 1 over n squared as n tends to infinity. In both cases, the limit of the nth root of a n in absolute value as n tends to infinity is equal to 1, and yet the first series diverges the second series converges, which shows that when the limit from the root test is equal to 1, we cannot conclude anything, as the series can possibly diverge or converge. And that's it.